This morning the Lord has given me a very powerful message to share with you. I was to go through a little battle to get this word of God to you. But I do believe the Lord would make this meditation a blessing to every one of us. The caption for this morning meditation is Our Warfare Our Warfare If you got a copy of the Bible, kindly turn with us to Ephesians chapter 6. We shall read from verse 10 through verse 18. Ephesians chapter 6 from verse 10. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that you may be able to withstand in the, day, in the evil day, and having done all, to stand. Stand therefore, having your loins get about with truth, and having on the breastplate of righteousness, and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith you shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. And take the helmet of salvation, <coughs> sorry, and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, and watching there and with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. <coughs> Christian walk is a battlefield. We have to fight a battle against our own flesh, fight battle against the spirit of the world, the system of the world, this age, new waves, and we have to fight against Satan. World, flesh, Satan. Jihadi is a holy war, war against our own flesh, war against the world, this age, this system. We are at war against principalities, we are at war against powers, we are at war against the rulers of darkness. We are to war against the evil spirits in heavenlies. We got a spiritual warfare. If a Christian boy or a girl, if a Christian believer doesn't face a battle, if you don't face a battle, if you don't feel there's a battle that you have to fight, I'm afraid that you are on the wrong side. That you are on the wrong side. My dear brother, my dear sister, we have got a battle to fight. We are good soldiers. Paul tells Timothy, you are a good soldier. Paul says, I fought a good fight. Fight a good fight. My dear brother, my dear sister, I'm going to share with you seven salient points 
our Christian warfare. You have got a battle to fight. Let me repeat it, even at the risk of monotonous, you have to fight against your own flesh, your own carnalities, your own mindset, your own thought process. You have to fight against your own culture. You have to fight against the concepts you have formed. You have to fight against yourself. I have to fight against myself, my background, my culture, my value system. I have to come in, I have to walk in Christ's value system. I have to dress myself. I have to adorn myself according to the Christian culture. Christian culture is not a Western culture. Christian culture is not an Eastern culture. It is the teachings of the Apostles. The teachings in the New Testament. It is my culture. Maybe the culture from which I come. If that culture is against the teachings of the New Testament, now I have to change. I might have cherished that was good. I might have cherished that was good. Now I have to fight against it. I might have got a concept, a mindset that I must amass wealth in this world. I must build a mansion for me. I must have a very good bank balance. I must leave a fat bank balance for my children. I may have a concept. Now when I become a Christian, there's a different value system. Don't amass wealth for you in this world. That's a different value system. We are pilgrims in this world. A mansion is built for me in heaven. A different value system. I get a value system. I may not leave this perishable, perishable wealth to my children. I must leave character to them. So my value system changes. I don't want to amass wealth for me in this world. That day struggle is enough for me. My daily bread is enough for me. The Lord has been really wonderful to us. The year 1972 I got saved. 44 years the Lord has been good unto me. In the year 1977 we got married. The Lord has been good unto us. In 85 when I was at the peak frame of my career, God is a witness. They wanted me to become a principal. That February, or, or rather that January they called, sister and said, your husband is a little reluctant to take up a administrative job. You tell him, the CEO, uh, the education officer told my wife. I was not keen even on then because I was doing ministry. When I get an administrative post as the principal of that institution, that would affect my ministry. My dear brother, my dear sister, at that time, we resigned our job. Came out for the full-time ministry without knowing where to sleep, without knowing what to eat, without knowing how to bring up our children. Our value system changed. Our concepts changed. We had to fight against our own carnality, our own concepts, our own value system. We had to fight against the world, the fashions of the world, the spirit of the world the knowledge of the world, the wisdom of the world, the traditions of the world, the rudiments of the world, all are Bible phrases. Rudiments of the world, traditions of the world, fashions of the world, spirit of the world, knowledge of the world, wisdom of the world, 
we have to fight against it. And we have to fight against the foes and the fraudulence of the devil. The foes of the devil, the teeth of the world serpent, the fraudulence of the devil, the tail of the world serpent. Lion and lurking viper, roaring lion and lurking viper, we have to fight against it. My dear brother, my dear sister, you all got warfare. There is a spiritual warfare against you. The Satan, the devil has got its own system, its own government. He is a ruler. He is a God. God of this world, the Bible says. This atmosphere, the air is in his control. He is a prince. He is the prince of this year. He is the prince of this year. Only through that air we have to see. Only through that atmosphere we have to hear. He is the prince of this year. He is God of this world. He is a ruler. He is a power of darkness. We must know our enemy. We must know our enemy. Our enemy is real. Goliath is real. Goliath is powerful. Goliath is about 10 feet. Goliath has well armed. He has got a shield. He has got a sword. He has got a spear. He has got a helmet. He has got a breastplate. He has got legards and greaves. He is fully armed. He is a giant. And there is a buckler going behind him. David, you must know Goliath. Satan is a ruler. Satan is a prince. He is power of darkness. He has got a government. He has got many lieutenants, deputies. He's a devil, the evil spirit. We say demons, devil, accuser, diabolic. So Paul says we are fighting against principality. That prince has got a domain. Municip's domain is called municipality. This prince has got his own domain, his kingdom. The Bible talks about his kingdom. Kingdom of darkness. When the Bible talks about kingdom, then there must be a king. We have to fight a battle. It's a battle against a government. It's a battle against a kingdom. It's a battle against a prince. His principalities, his powers. They are rulers. Evil rulers. Evil rulers in darkness. They are not in our visibility. That's what we read. Rulers of darkness. Evil rulers of darkness. They are spiritual wickedness in heavenlies. My dear brother, my dear sister. This word heavenlies used in Ephesians elsewhere that we are seated with him in heavenlies. We are seated with him in heavenlies. Same Ephesians we read, he has blessed us with all heavenly blessings. With all heavenly blessings. The same heavenly 
there is spiritual wickedness the same word for the fourth time used in the book of revelation chapter 12 a vision in heavenlies we are seated in heavenlies we are blessed with all blessings in heavenlies john sees a vision in heavenlies there's a woman clad with sun with a diadem of 12 stars clothed with sun clad with sun standing on the moon a baby in her womb a male child in her womb she is in the heavenlies in the same heavenlies that red world serpent both are in the heavenlies the church is in the heavenlies the spiritual wickedness is in the heavenlies only in the church realm where the church is the spiritual wickedness false doctrines false doctrines devil in the cloak of the angel angel of light devil in the cloak of the angel of light false brethren paul says there are robbers and the trouble because of the robbers and false brethren kallargalalum kalla sahodargalalum we have to fight against both the robbers are there false brethren false apostles false evangelists the spiritual wickedness in the heavenlies spiritual wickedness in the heavenlies false evangelists false prophets my dear brother my dear sister we have to fight against them you got a battle to fight then the book of jude we read we have to fight for the faith that was once delivered to the saints we have to fight for the faith once delivered to the saints we have to fight a battle he talks about a combat one to one combat my dear brother my dear sister there are different types of battle and our dear brother pelik and he is from military he knows about the combat battle he must have seen a rifle and the barrel a tip of the barrel there is a, knife, a bonnet a knife a bonnet you can shoot your enemy from a distance you may hide under a bush and shoot him or from an aircraft you may put a bomb but there is a combat battle you know to fight a combat battle with your rifle and bonnet one to one one to one my dear brother my dear sister we have to fight for the truth we have to fight for the faith we have to fight for the christian doctrines the other day a, a season sincere christian and i we are talking with one senior missionary so that missionary said i go to village to village even i stand on the street i preach christ i preach christ so that gentleman asked him so you are able to preach the historical christ can you preach what christ said what that you are preaching going village to village what that you are preaching you are in, introducing a, a historical christ you say christ was born for you christ died for you christ can forgive all your sins christ is coming back so this is just history of christ can you really teach christ can you really teach christ what christ has said 
Can you tell them that you have to take up the cross and follow them? Have you ever told the people, we want to follow Christ? You should deny yourself, take up the cross and follow him. Can you tell the people, if somebody compels you to go for one mile, be ready to go for two miles. Can you tell the people that don't amass wealth for you? Every advantage, every program, they want to amass wealth for them. Want more money to build more buildings. Crows, an office for 265 crows, a prayer hall where 2,500 people or 25,000 people can sit. So I need more money. So I need more agenda for that. Okay, for your birthday, you send 10,000 rupees. I put your name on the screen. Some agenda for fundraising. My dear brother, my dear sister, what happens? Can you tell the people don't amass wealth in this world? Can you tell the people don't worry about tomorrow? If I tell the people don't worry about tomorrow, they'll turn back and say don't worry about 2020. Don't worry about building. Can I tell the people, look at the sparrow, look at the birds of the sky, you don't worry about anything. Can the evangelists talk about all these things today? My dear brother, my dear sister, we have to fight against all evil things. We have got a battle to fight. We have to battle to fight. We have to fight against robbers. We have to fight against false Christians. False brothers, false doctrines, false evangelists, false apostles. So, we have got a very big battle to fight against. My dear brother, my dear sister, I told you that I would share seven points with you, but I am afraid this Lord's introduction is very essential that you would be able to have a grasp of those points. May the Lord help me. Number one, preparation for the battle. Preparation for the battle. Ephesians chapter 6 verse 10. We can find our meditation from Ephesians chapter 6 from verse 10 to 18. Wherever necessary I may give you a few references. Finally my brethren, be strong in the Lord. Be strong in the Lord. In the Lord. Hallelujah. Shall we just lift up our hands and say one hallelujah? Say so shout and say hallelujah. I love to hear you better. Say hallelujah. Hallelujah. We have to be strong in the Lord. You cannot, you cannot, you cannot fight this battle unless you are strong in the Lord. You have to be strong in the Lord. The literal meaning is stout hearted. There is no mercy for sin. There is no room for compromise. There is no, there is no space for Balak and his men. To give temptation, I'll give you this, I'll give you that, I'll give you money, I'll give you name, I'll give you fame, I'll give you how I'll do all these things for you. There's no there's no space. Stout hearted. Kadina That's the word strong. Let come what may. Stout hearted in the law. What do you mean by in the Lord? When we receive Jesus Christ, He has come into our heart. We are baptized into the Lord, into Christ. Being baptized into Christ, from that moment, we are in the Lord. We are in the Lord. You read the book of Ephesians, in Christ, in Him. We are in Him. So what does it actually mean? I am in the Lord. I am strong in the Lord. I am strong in loving the Lord. 
my jesus what is loving the lord it's not loving a historical jesus is not it, it just a loving a historical jesus it is not that loving the lord my dear brother my dear sister jesus is the word of god jesus is the truth jesus is the way jesus is the life so loving the truth loving his word loving his way that is loving jesus stout hearted in loving jesus i love him what do i mean by love him i say i tell my ma mother mother i love him mama mom, i love him mama i love him mama but i don't i don't take his word if he that loves him will abide by his commandments you can't love the lord when you don't love his words you can't love the lord when you don't walk in his ways so be strong in the lord loving him i do anything and everything for my jesus or in other words i do i, I do anything and everything for the truth that is given to me for the life that he has given me the sword is come three against two two against three father against son son against father mother in law against daughter in law daughter in law against mother they told polycap polycap you know the whole world is against you polycap said sir i am against the whole world i am against the whole world i love my jesus i love the word of god i love the truth truth should be bought should not be bought i'm sorry truth should be bought it should not be sold for petty gains for paisas i cannot sell the truth 1970 to the lord save me my dear brother my dear sister the lord has blessed me with all blessings god is a witness my conscience is a witness and the conscience of some of you may be a witness that i never gone before money always money has come behind me not to speak out myself but i want to drive home this point love the lord love the truth stout hearted in the truth even to wilderness what do you want to see what do you want to see you want to see a reed that swayed by the wind you want to see a reed that is swayed by the wind you want to see a stout hearted man the rustic john the baptist kingdom of god belongs to them they are stout hearted my dear brother my dear sister you know the time that i got saved i known gentleman and uh, his brother the lord used his brother wonderfully to bring me into this glorious truth a a very sincere man he his brother they all were bachelors teachers they were staying together and i spent most of my beginning days with them and the elder brother a man of patience soft spoken he went to his native place for his betrothal came back with a ring the younger brother broke oh my anna ipdi pantane oh my anna ipdi pantane oh my anna ipdi pannetane he removed his wedding ring and put and the betrothal ring put it in the box Then your younger brother was unable to comprehend. The marriage was with all jewels. The younger brother was more sad. 
they were the people who were leading me into this truth years passed by the younger brother married to say what the elder brother was what the elder brother done was nothing completely sold himself to the jewels unable to stand my dear brother my dear sister in his love in his truth in his cause just when i was taking down i put these notes in his teachings in his doctrines in his cause in his calling in his grace be strong be strong don't be swayed this way and that way you may have like bell uh, bell of your eyes open you might have heard the lord speaking to you you may be a great prophet but he was not strong he was swaying he was not very decisive he was not stout hearted let come what may when you take your decision strong in the lord strong in the lord a number of occasions where my faith was tested the grace of the lord enabled me i just say one incident because it's very strong in my mind i want to tell you there are a number of incidents while i was when the time that i got saved i was in tirunendavu there's a house of prayer and they are running a school they gave me even as a rock and they gave me a job in that school and they promised that they would send me to my teachers training but i was going to a pentecostal church the place the lord has shown suddenly suddenly in the month of uh january or something and my career was to end i was studying my b.a with the promise that i would get an assignment in that school One day the correspondent called me and said, a very senior person. He said, Thambi, I said that I would sponsor you, thinking that you would, support, you would come to our church. I am sorry, I can't sponsor you. I can't give you the job. Because you are going to a different church. Now Sundays you decide to come here, then only we'll give the job when you finish your education, your studies. With all respect, I said, sorry, Ankara. I go where the Lord leads, sorry, Ankara. My future was in stakes. My future was in stakes. My dear brother, my dear sister, I didn't say I'll pray and tell you. I didn't say give me one week time. I didn't say I will decide. I said sorry. My dear brother, my dear sister. That was a, that year there was a heavy rain. So it was declared the schools would reopen only in the August. I am not going to have a job. I don't know how to hunt for a job in Chennai. I was with all hope that I will get my job there. With a job guarantee I was doing my B.A. Just one word. Because not I am attending a particular church. I will not be given a job there. I didn't say I will pray for her. I will pray until you say, any of you going to this church or that church, all one and the same. I can get a job there. I can also be a, a preacher or a minister in this church. I used to preach in the church also. No. I said, sorry, Ankur. It's the grace of God. I can say it's the grace that was given in my blood. 
With all humility I said, I'm not with arrogance. I don't know what I could do for my job. I'm in Chennai. I don't know how I will face my tomorrow without job. Exactly. Exactly the same day when I said no, I went to the college. I was doing my beard. I was sitting in my class. Somebody came and said, Vice Principal wants you. I, I, I'm sorry, it was in the month of March. They said, Vice Principal wants you. I went to his room. He asked me, Do you know St. George's? I said, I don't know, sir. Do you know Amanjikare? I don't know, sir. I am from Tirnindabu. You know Pachepa's college? I don't know. Sir. Hey, what a man you are. You know New College? I don't know, sir. New College was at the end of our college. He said, you go this way, get New College, get this bus, ask for Pachepa's college, get on. There will be an opposite building. Today there is an interview for, the, for you there. I didn't know what to do. You go with your formals. It's an Anglo-Indian school. I went to that interview with a borrowed tie. It was March 3rd. March 2. I was told, no job. Because you are not attending this church. I was stout-hearted. Only one day the trial was. March 3 has called for an interview. The first time Joe met me was on March 3, it must be. I took his class only for my interview. June 1, I joined the school. My dear brother, my dear sister. We have, we have to be prepared. Strong in the Lord, strong in His teaching, strong in your calling, strong in your convictions. Let come what may. There are ever so many trials on the spot. And the Lord says, come, come. Walk on the water. That's the preparedness. Strong in the Lord. Strong in your calling, strong in your love, strong in the cause, strong in your commitment. When I was in St. George's, there was a social a liquor party, a cocktail, where the principal and the director and the treasurer of that school, they all were in the liquor party. I said, no. I said, no. They said, say, uh, say cheers at least with water in your goblet. I said, no. I was, I was 22 years old. I was strong in the Lord. I said, alcohol is right or wrong, I am not participating in this cocktail. When I say talk about Thirnendavu, Rebi is here. When I talk about St. George's, Joe is here. I am not from somewhere to tell you this cock and bull stories. I was to take a decision. That is the heart. That is the heart. That is the preparedness. Be strong in the Lord. What is, again I tell you, what is strong in the law? In your calling, in your conviction, in your obedience, in your love for the law, in your cause for the law, in his teaching, in his doctrines. Stout hearted. That is strong in the law. You have to be strong in the law. Trusting him and relying on his promises. They are able to deliver me from this fire. He is able to deliver me from this fire. Whether he delivers me or he doesn't deliver me, I will not bow before this touch. 
He is able to deliver me. He delivers me or he doesn't deliver me. My dear brother, my dear sister. Even a couple of days back I told one of our believers. I know to love others. But I don't know to fall at anybody's feet. I know to love others. But I don't know to fall at the feet of anybody else. Only my head will bow to my Jesus and Jesus alone. I may show respect to others. But I cannot do obedience to others. I cannot do puja to others. One day one man said, one of the sisters here, In the Deva me rubbish, nonsense, calling somebody in the Deva me. One worker, once uh, one uh, uh, pastor told somebody, Ungalada Nambirke. Ungalada Nambirke. I don't I, I don't I, I I'm not relying on anybody. Somebody could help me, it's good. He it doesn't help me, it's good. I'm relying on him. So many people in my life, without cause, they have left me. But I am not shaken. Yeah, I'm not relying on anybody. I'm not relying on anybody. I love everybody. I love everybody. There was a brother, husband and wife. They lo I love them as my own children. We love them as our own children. Probably equal to that, I don't think anybody we have loved. They were helping us with the PS system. He was helping us with the PS system. No problem with us. For some other cause, they left. But the PA system is still continuing. After so many others have helped. Our eyes are only on the Lord. Our eyes are only on the Lord. My dear brother, my dear sister. Just I just read a note that I have put. Strong for service. Strong for suffering. Strong for fighting. Well armed without. Well armed without. You got helmet, you got sword, you got shield, you got everything. But if you are not, oh, if you are not strong inside, you are in the military, you are given a very powerful gun in your hand. A very powerful gun in your hand. And if you are not strong inside with that gun, it's not the gun. Strength inside. Well armed without. Very strong within. That is the preparedness. In military, your mental strength you are trained for your mental strength then before you are using the weapons. Before using the weapons. He is standing by your side. The enemy. And you have to pierce your bonnet through him. You need a mental strength for that. Ayo, ayo, ayo. So number one. In verse 10, be strong in the law. And verse 2, uh, uh, point 2, same verse, finally, that word finally means, after all, you're not the lost. After all, everything I have said, after all, this is important. This only uh, summarizes the whole thing. That word finally, after all, after all what I have said, what is important, be strong in the Lord. Let come what may. 
let come what may be strong in the lord finally my brethren be strong in the lord and in the power of his might be strong in the lord and in the power of his might number 2 we have to be strong in the power of his might what does it mean the power of his might so we it is, it is my decision i am clinging on to the grace of god i have to do something paul says i labor more than all but it's not i the grace that is bestowed on me but the grace that is bestowed on me is not vain i labor more than all so both are important he was strong in his spirit the grace helped him the grace helped him in the book of jonah we read they went behind vanities they followed vanities and first took the grace, grace that was given to them or maya e pinbati following vanity they first took the grace that was given to thangale kalikapadum kirubaye veenaakkinar so it's one side is not the arrogance because of the grace of god we have got a conviction we are strong in the lord you be strong in the lord then paul was very careful it is not only your own conviction is not only your own decision is not only your love for christ is not only your love for his teachings and his doctrines be strong in the power of his might to understand that is a very very important you can turn with me to the same book of ephesians chapter 1 verses 18 down <coughs> the eye of our understanding being enlightened that you may know what is the scope of his calling number 1 our eyes of understanding must be enlightened to know what is the hope of his calling number 2 our eyes of understanding must be enlightened that we may know what the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints to know what is the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints number 3 our eyes of understanding must be enlightened to know what is the exceeding greatness of his power to us word who believe according to the working of his mighty power which he wrought in Christ when he raised him from the dead and set him at his own right hand in the heavenly places to I go only to the third part this itself is a big mess uh, sermon god willing i'll speak to you about that some other day today i just go to the third part your eyes of understanding must be enlightened to know your eyes of understanding must be enlightened to know what is the exceeding greatness of his power to us word what is the exceeding greatness of i i don't know what the word power paul had simply awesome you must have rise of understanding enlightened to know what is the exceeding greatness of his power to us word who believe we believe to us word who believe to those who believe his exceeding greatness of power his exceeding greatness of his power exceeding greatness greatness exceeding greatness it exceeds greatness it exceeds greatness exceeding greatness of his power what is the exceeding greatness of his power 
to us who would believe according to the working of his mighty power according to the working of his mighty power which he wrought in Christ when he raised him from the dead so to put it simple Jesus died on the cross his body was mutilated his back was like a plowed field the marred mutilated body was buried wrapped in shrouds funeral linen kept in the sepulcher three days three nights passed by the mutilated body was in the sepulcher there is no life in it now the spirit of the lord is coming into the sepulcher the spirit of the lord was hovering upon the dead body of jesus christ the spirit of the lord made that jesus rise with a living body it is the same mutilated body is a resurrection of that body that weak frail body the body that was tired the body that was thirsty the body that was sleeping in the ship the body that was blessing the bread and the wake up the body that was scourged the body that was nailed to the cross the body that was buried that body raised up as a glorious body the body with flesh and blood was raised up with a glorified body what a tremendous power of god not only raised jesus from the dead brought him out of the sepulcher for lazarus to come out the stone should be removed for this body to come out no stone is to be removed he walked with that body he talked with that body we even touched that body they touched those feet they worshiped him he told disciples touch and see i am not a spirit it is a spirit body it was not a spirit he rose with the body the same body that was buried what a mighty power of god was that what a mighty power of god was that the same power that's what we read here and wrote in christ who when he raised him from the dead and set him high at his own right hand in the heavenly places Now Jesus is being seated in the heavenly places. In the heavenly places. What a power it is. Now he says that power the power of that might power of that might it is in us. our eyes of understanding must be enlightened to know what is the exceeding greatness of his power to us word who believe what is that power that power that raised jesus from the dead and made him sit at the right hand of the father in heavenly that power is working towards us paul says in romans 8:11 the spirit that raised jesus from the dead that same spirit is in 
The same spirit is given to me. I don't have a different spirit. I got the spirit of God who raised Jesus from the dead. That spirit is in me. That spirit is in me. My dear brother, my dear sister, I love to read Ephesians 3.20. Now unto him that is able, that is able to be exceeding abundantly, again we read, exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think, according to the power that worketh in me. So I am strong in the Lord, in his teachings, in his doctrines, in his love, in loving Jesus and the cause, the calling. Be strong to suffer for him, to serve him, to fight for him. Let come what may. Let come what may. He is the strength of them to turn the battle to the gate. We'll see. We'll see. What is, what is the end? We'll see. My dear brother, my dear sister. I love what Polycarp said. It's not the whole world is against me. I am against the whole world. I am against the whole world. My dear brother, my dear sister. And number two. Be strong in the Lord. The power of God that is working in you. If you want to be strong in the Lord. The word of God must be strong in you. If you want to be strong in the doctrine, doctrine of God must be strong in you. The power that works in you. You should allow that power of God to work in you. That's the motivating factor. That's the spirit of God in us. We should not possess the spirit of God just to do some magic show. Just to, not just to do some gimmicks. The power of God in us, the exceeding, he says, exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that worketh in us. That power of God. When the Holy Ghost comes upon you, you receive the power. Power for what? To be my witnesses. When the Holy Ghost comes upon you, you get some unknown times. When the Holy Ghost comes upon you, you get some demonstrative gifts. My dear brother, my dear sister, the greatestness of that power to be his witness. It is the power that I received. In Colossians 1.29 he says, Where unto I also labor, Striving according to his working, which worketh in me mightily. According to his working, that worketh in me mightily. That strength we need. I remember, I, I, I remember what Pastor Sundaram said. One o'clock machine water no. One o'clock machine water no. I tell you, one o'clock machine water, no, brother. Young girl, young boy, one o'clock machine water, no. That should work in you. Exact word he said, one o'clock machine water, no. I will live for Christ. I'll die for Christ. Let come what may. I'll stand for the truth. The whole world may mock at me. I have to fight against my flesh. I have to fight against the world system. I have to fight against the fashions of the world. People may say I'm mad. People will say you are alone. A few days back, one pastor said, Pastor, you are alone. You are alone. I'm called to be alone. Jacob, will be solitary. I remember William words with solitary reaper. My dear brother, my dear sister, be alone. A power that worketh in us. I just read one verse to you, Ephesians 3.16 that, that he would 
grant you according to the riches of his glory to be strengthened with might by his spirit in the inner man be strong in the lord in our thought in our mindset in our decisions in our determinations in our uh, resolutions but a power that is working in us we are strong in this inner man in the spirit man that is because of the power of his might the power of the holy ghost the power of the spirit that raised up jesus from the dead the exceeding greatness of his power to us word who believe which he demonstrated when raised jesus from the dead and made him sit at the heavenly place that power should be working in us that power should be working in us then the death comes okay no problem my dear brother my dear sister for your benefit i tell you the time that i came for the ministry the day that i was relieved from my secular job pa sundaramaiya came to talk to sister and i i wept 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 bitterly not because of a faith life that i am facing but i could not imagine that i was stopped teaching i love teaching mathematics I could not imagine that I was not going to teach mathematics anymore. Literally I can say a towel, a bath towel was wet. That much I wept. For nearly more than an hour, Pasundaram was sitting and talking to us. I don't remember every word Pasundaram was telling us, but one thing I remember. He said, whatever situation may come, whatever situation may come, you must have the boldness to say, I know. Never you should say, I never thought this would happen. I never thought this would happen. Any situation you must be able to say, Yes, I know. Yes, I know. Let come what me. Yes, I know. My dear brother, my dear sister, that was a very strong teaching for me. And the Lord added to it, Let come what me. What may happen is according to the word of God. for the fulfillment of scriptures for the fulfillment of scriptures this is what said in the bible it's happening that so strong in the lord and number 2 strong in his might this is very very important my dear brother my dear sister i'll continue the remaining points god willing coming we shall be pray pray for these two things Lord I must have I must be stout heart I must be stout heart in you in loving you in serving you in fighting for you in suffering for I must be strong will Lord give me that grace give me that grace I must be strong in the Lord in my decision in my commitment in my calling i must be strong i should not be like a reed that sways by every wind i should not be moved away by every bit of doctrines i must fight the battle what has been delivered unto the saints once strong in the lord strong in the lord standing on his promises Number 2 I must be strong in the power of his might the spirit of the lord that works in me exceeding greatness of his power power of his might to me were towards me in me the power that raised jesus from the dead made him sit at the right hand of the father in the heaven please that power is working in me that anointing i received power and according to the power of his might that works in me take a decision holy spirit the anointing strength in the inner man Strengthen the inner man. 
these two words put together strength in your outer man strength in your inner man to be strong in the lord to be strong in his in the might of his power in the power of his might the lord will give you grace amen before i could bring you the announcements we shall have a, a song standing on the promises of god be firm in the lord trust in him rely on his promises don't be swayed to the left or to the right faithfully see that as called you he will not leave you he will not forsake